everybody, Pastor Tim, back with you for part three of our Zoom interview with Pastor Catherine Duncan up there in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And um, uh, so tell, tell me again now, now that we're live, it is how hot up there right now today? It is 93 degrees and very humid. Yeah. <laughs> it's a heat wave. Yeah, in Minnesota, 93 plus 90% humidity. That's awful. Right. And, and so this week we got a little smarter. She had her air conditioning on last week just so she wouldn't die during the Zoom thing. But now we put some things in her ears. So um, sounds going to be perfect along Good. with all the content um, we are talking. So we, we have talked so far about relationships. Last week, we talked a little bit about stress and we talked about grief and we talked about trauma. Uh, today, we're going to talk about resilience, which is a really important topic because we've really been through it. And um, people are going to go through it again, right? Even though we may not have another pandemic, hopefully for 100 years or more, uh, life just hits. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's sickness or a job loss or a broken relationship, how do we build resilience? So let's talk about resilience today. And let's, let's start with, why don't you define for us what you mean by resilience? Great. Well, thank you for having me come again and speak with you. Um, so resiliency, I like to think of resiliency is the ability to bounce back after adversity and having I, a colleague once said to me, and it really, um, really took with me. And that is, do you have that cushion of support? Do you have that support when things happen in life and in, in life things happen? We go through ups and downs and challenges and wow, we certainly have in this last year. So really important to build that reserve, that cushion of support um, and build that inner strength to help you every day of your life. I like that I inner strength uh, mm -hmm. that helps you bounce back. So what I hear you saying in part of that is, we're going to have times where we're down mm -hmm. and, and uh, that's normal, but resilience helps us bounce back from those kinds mm -hmm. of things. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit of, then for us, if you could, um, I, I know that you've got some pillars of resilience. What, what are those? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of different models out there on resiliency. I have, I've been researching this topic for the last 20 years, wow. personally, professionally, I've gone through, a lot of my life, you know, being a childhood cancer survivor and going through a, having a near-death experience, my husband five years ago, completely healthy, collapsed, it was in the ICU. And, um, and then working with people as a chaplain, a lot in trauma and of life. So it's been a topic I've been really interested in and how do you build your strength on a daily basis? So this has been a topic I've been passionate about. And so I define resiliency in four ways. I call them the four pillars of resiliency. They are number one, self-care. The second is self-compassion. The third is mindfulness. And the fourth is nurture. How do you nurture this in your life? So I'll just, if you're, if you're okay, I'll just dive in. Yeah, please do. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So self-care, it just first starts basically with your body, exercise, nutrition, sleep, uh, you know, I have a great colleague who says sleep is a non-negotiable. Most adults research, you need minimum seven to eight hours of sleep. Do you have a good sleep hygiene? What is sleep for you? Really important to look at. Nutrition. Uh, do you eat really healthy? I mean, what we eat really is a huge determinant of our health and well-being. And, you know, eating heavy vegetables, fruits, grains, um, fruits, vegetables, grains, you know, food that's not highly processed, uh, that is chemical free if possible. Um, that said, I'm all about, yes, having a great piece of chocolate cake, but, you know, really being mindful of what you're eating and noticing how foods really give you energy and make you feel good and really eating for your body. Um, and then um, sleep, exercise, exercise, nutrition. So exercise, the latest I've heard of the CDC guidelines of exercise is adults need 150 minutes of exercise a week. So that comes out at about 20 minutes a day. And that's even just walking. Walking 20 minutes a day is so good for you. So minding your body physically, um, 
exercise, nutrition, sleep. I'd also include in that self-awareness is really important. I think the beginning of all healing starts with awareness. So are you aware of your strengths, your weaknesses, what your triggers are um, in building your strength? Really important to work with that. Um, the second self-compassion, we said a few words about this last week. Self-compassion, are you loving and kind to yourself? I, I really think the undergirding of all resiliency is love and it starts with self-love. You can only give to another you know, in the depth of love you have within yourself to another. So self, self-compassion. self um, And I think I mentioned this last week. One of the models I, I really like is Kristen Neff. I think her work is excellent. She's out of University of Texas. You know, she defines it self-kindness, common humanity, and mindfulness. So self-kindness, are you loving and kind to yourself? Really important to notice are you kind to yourself versus we're so human, we can be negative and critical, but when that happens, it releases cortisol hormone in our body. So catching it and reframing it and coming back to choosing positive, growing the good. Um, common humanity, you know, in life, things happen, we make mistakes, you know, and when that happens, can you get the support you need versus beating yourself up? Um, and mindfulness, holding all of life, the good, the bad, can you be with all of it without going to extremes? And, and to say a few more words about, you know, mindfulness, I think of mindfulness of just being present right now in this moment, mm -hmm. not thinking, you know, of the past, which our minds can go to so easily or the future, but just right now. And when we're present in just this moment, we're fully alive. And it's not when we're ruminating past, future. So even right now, while I'm talking with you, Tim, and people listening, I would just invite you, are you actually, you're hearing me, you're seeing me, hearing me, but are you hearing me or are you thinking about, okay, what am I going to go? What snack am I going to go get? Or I need a cold drink or our minds are so powerful. Like just, are you really present in this moment? And it starts with awareness. Where are you? coming back into your body, your breath. I'll just, I'll share with you for a minute. Here's a couple mindfulness practices that I really like. And maybe some of you hearing me right now already have a mindfulness practice, but in the morning, let's say you have, you know, a cup of coffee in the morning or tea, let's say coffee. You go in the kitchen, you make coffee, you ha your, get your coffee cup and you're holding the coffee cup. And you're not, the TV's not on, the radio's not on, you're not looking at your phone, all that. You're not doing any of that. You're holding your coffee cup. You feel the warmth of the coffee cup. Maybe you start to salivate like, mm, I want a sip. You take a sip. Maybe you have a window. You look out your window. Maybe you see a bird fly by. That is an example of being completely, fully present in the moment, drinking your coffee, just even for a minute or two. Yeah. You know, or or let's say lunch, you take a break for lunch. If you're at work, if you're home, wherever you are. But again, it's consciously choosing. I'm turning off, you know, TV, radio, my phone, my computer. I mean, all the distractions. And let's say you have a turkey sandwich, you're holding the bread. You're just completely present in the moment. You take a bite of the sandwich. You enjoy the feel, the sensation, eating it. You're just completely present. So those are a few small examples yeah. of practicing mindful, powerful. So uh, if I can just interrupt at this mm -hmm. point, so many things that you said so far just get me thinking. Uh, I, had, I just listened to a guy today uh, that said over the last several years, we've seen this huge spike in anxiety. Huge spike mm -hmm. in, in uh, eating disorders, particularly obesity. Uh, and all of these things sort of work together. We get anxious and we eat and we eat and we get anxious, for example. Mm -hmm. um, we probably have done more sitting than we've ever done before in lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all us binge watching shows and they say sitting is the new smoking. Uh, <laughs> and then I, I heard today, somebody just said a new study came out. We spend 40 hours a week on our devices, our screens. Wow. So all of these things are complicate, really, uh, 
the the momentum to build the resilience to begin with, right? It's mm-hmm. and I know we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna get to that when we talk about neuroplasticity, but just to put it out there that, that these things are so challenging mm-hmm. for us in this world, uh, and especially when you've been in lockdown, it's so easy to get into these habits that really aren't all that good for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and bad habits are easier to build than good habits, aren't they? Usually, yeah, <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Yes. So so we had we had so give us the pillars so far. Yeah. So self-care, yep, self-care. Self-compa- self-compassion, mindfulness. mindfulness, and then nurture. Like how do yep. you nurture this every day of your life? It's a choice. It's a choice. Every one of us, we're either making consciously or, or subconsciously, we're, we're choosing not to care for our bodies, our hearts, our souls. It's a choice we're making no matter what, every single day. So, you know, what choices are you making? And <clears throat> it takes real consciousness. And again, I think it starts with awareness. What's going on? Where am I? What am I feeding? What am I growing the good or not? You know, I'll share with you a term that was when I learned this years ago was so interesting. And the term is negativity bias. It's actually a scientific term that our brains are wired from prehistoric times to the negative. So just understanding that, you know, understanding our brains are wired that way, consciously like, oh, I keep going to this rumination, this worry, but coming back to just this moment and choosing, choosing the positive. There's a, there's a great um, uh, story. It's called the two wolves story that really illustrates this. I don't know if you've heard this story or not. Just a quick synopsis is elder grandfather Cherokee man is talking to his grandson and he's telling him there are these two voices in my head. You know, one is positive and affirming and life giving and comforting and peaceful. And then the other voice is negative and critical and judgmental and um, fearful. And, And the grandson jumps in and says, like, which voice wins? And the grandfather says, the one you feed. Yeah, that's such a great story. Mm-hmm. So, you know, going back to how we're living and how we've been living in this really hard time, you know, another word that comes to mind is self regulation. We have the power to regulate our bodies, our minds, our spirits. And I think this was uh, maybe said briefly last week, but, you know, one thing just to again highlight today is the power of regulating our body. Are we in a stress, you know, anxiety, stress state, or are we in a relaxed state? And just simply noticing, um, oh, I'm stressed, I'm getting anxious, my, you know, it increases your blood pressure, your heart rate, your cortisol levels, even to like have this full-blown stress response. Or, you know, can you start to notice I'm getting stressed and come back and just breathe? come back, maybe you go for a walk. What starts Mm -hmm. to calm? I mean, uh, Dr. Herbert Benson, you start breathing, five minutes of breathing lowers your blood pressure, your heart rate, your cortisol level. We can self-soothe, we can self-regulate, which is huge. Yeah. Um, Where does does, uh, fun (laughs) fit in? Passion, the things that you're passionate about. Uh, You know, for me, when I go to bed at night, I I read some sort of mindless British mystery, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, or, you know, so something just to, that, that takes my mind off of work, busyness, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Uh, wh- where do we fund uh, passion and love for things into that? Mm-hmm. Great question. Um, you know, I like, um, I really like Rick Hansen out of California. He's written the book Resilient. He does a lot of speaking on resiliency. And when we get to the topic of neuroplasticity, I did my training with Rick Hansen on neuroplasticity. Oh. Yeah, so I did my coursework and work with him. Um, But he says, he uses this phrase that it always stays with me, growing the good. You know, how how do you grow the good? And what is life-giving? What is life-giving and being conscious of that? There's a um, old, uh, it's been around a long time, spiritual practice um, called, uh, it's the examen from St. Ignatius of Loyola, comes out of the Christian tradition from the 17th century the spiritual exercises and one of the distillations of the exercises. And I I did the exercises 20 years ago and it was life-changing. If anyone ever has questions, happy to answer questions about the spiritual exercises through 
St. Ignatius of Loyola. <clears throat> anyway, the exercises, the examen are two questions. Reviewing your day, you know, what at the end of the day was life-giving? And what at the end of the day was not life-giving, took your life away. And I can tell you, if you start paying attention, mm -hmm. asking those two questions at the end of the day, day after day, even for a week or two weeks, you're going to start seeing patterns of, hmm, this situation, this person, this, it's just really depletes me versus growing more into the good, the joy, the love, and really consciously choosing that. Wow. That's good. For the kids, we call them happies and crappies. Oh, <laughs> Start building, the, uh, to start building that in them. So when, when we mm -hmm. talk about uh, things like self-regulation or discipline, you know, the, the disciplines of eating right, exercise, breathing, uh, a lot of times we feel like we're powerless on that, right? That life controls us. Um, but you've already said and hinted at that we really have this powerful thing up here uh, mm -hmm. that, that really is a gift that God has given to us that can help us build resilience. So how does that work in the mind? Talk about this phrase, neuroplasticity. So I love this concept of neuroplasticity. It's still an, a, a newer concept. So what neuroplasticity means is what we think, what we feel, and our environment is shaping our brain structure all day, every day which is fascinating, which again comes back to that understanding of self-regulation, how are you creating your life, shaping your mind. So here's how it works. Um, if you, let's say a couple days ago, hypothetically, let's say a couple days ago, you were talking to a family member. Let's say you have a sister, you're talking to a sister and you got in an argument and you had a really challenging conversation. And then a day later, the next couple of days, you're ruminating about it. You keep thinking about it and worrying and feeling upset about it. The more you ruminate and think about it, you are strengthening those negative neural pathways in your brain. So here's how neuroplasticity 101, how it works. Awareness, again, a word, the word awareness. Where are you? Wow, I keep ruminating about this difficult, challenging experience I had with this family member so just naming it out loud or in your mind, there I am. I keep going back to this negative, difficult situation. Come back to the present moment. When I say that, come back to your breath. Can you just feel your breath coming in and out of your body? If you have trouble feeling your breath, here's another idea. Can you feel the energy moving in your hands right now? When you feel the energy moving in your hands and your fingers, your chattering, fast chattering mind stops. You cannot do both at the same time. And then it takes courage, but can you take a minute and just feel whatever feeling? Feelings aren't permanent, they move through us. Can you just feel, oh, I'm feeling sad or fearful or whatever that is, feel it. Because feelings will just move through. Let yourself feel it for a few minutes. Letting yourself really feel the feelings. And then the third step is choosing a positive affirmation, a positive past memory, a positive future memory, something that really is good and you be with, you're with that, you marinate in that. When you're choosing those positive affirmations, those positive memories or future thoughts, you are creating these positive neural pathways in your brain. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, I can share if you would like I, another neuroplasticity model. If this comes out of the Rick Hansen work. Would you like to hear this one? I would, yes. And then I have a story I can tell you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this, my training with Rick Hansen, um, I learned this model called HEAL. A takeaway today for anyone watching. I, I think this is a great model. HEAL. What does this stand for? H, having a positive experience either in the moment or remembering it. E stands for enriching it, remembering all the different sensations around that experience. A stands for absorbing it, like really feeling it and taking it into your body. And L stands for linking it. Let's say you had a difficult, challenging experience a few days ago, and then you have a positive experience. You hold that positive experience or memory in the front of your brain and that negative experience in the back of your brain. And the positive will start to outweigh and dissipate the negative. So quick example. Memorial Day, my two kids, they're in their 20s. We got together and had dinner outside and it was 
lovely. The sun was setting. There was a cool breeze. We were eating Italian food. We were telling jokes and laughing. My heart was so full. I just was like, ah, with my family and my husband, my kids. So that's an example of re- going back to that memory and just remembering the whole evening and sitting and marinating in that creates those strong neuro positive pathways. Right. So a takeaway that people could do. So uh, I've, uh, I've mentioned to you before and my congregation knows I, I have struggled with an anxiety disorder. So mm-hmm. I had panic attacks and all that stuff earlier mm-hmm. and have spent years just learning these new techniques to manage it and so on. And um, several years ago, I got ringing in my ears. Mm. Now, my chiropractor was thought, you know, maybe my neck was out. And it was for several months. And my neck is never mm. out, my chiropractor, but it was really out. So that helped a little bit. But I came across a book by a guy uh, who had been through some anxiety himself. And he said that sometimes ringing in the ears is a way to distract you from your anxiety. Mm. And we all have sounds going on in our brains. And when you're anxious, sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll try to take away from the anxiousness and we'll listen to the sounds in our brain. So he, he created several um, mindfulness relaxation. Uh, mm. um, and they were all guided and he would just take you in your imagination to places and so on and so forth. But one of his key takeaways was we create these paths, what you're saying, we create, these road, these highways in our brains, Mm -hmm. they're always going to be there. Mm -hmm. We can overlay them with new pathways. And uh, so that's what his guiding uh, was doing for me. Uh, And um, it's it's somewhat what you're saying, uh, replacing the negative thoughts, the the anxious thoughts with positive ones through self-talk, through relaxation. And eventually the ringing in my ears went away. And then I also learned that when they come back, you know, there are things I can do quickly to move Mm -hmm. my attention away from the ringing in my ear to other things, right? Which is what Mm -hmm. you're saying. This brain is this remarkable ability. Mm -hmm. But what it helped me was, why do I keep falling into these negative patterns? And he said, of course, this was a few years ago. He said, those pathways stay there. So you have to just keep overlaying them again with the positive. Uh, and the brain has this remarkable, resilient ability to recreate itself, which is what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so we're, we're not helpless, right, in the face of these things. But it does take a little bit of practice. It takes a little bit of discipline. And it takes mm-hmm. some techniques. Mm-hmm. And, and I would I would add right. in that the most current research, yeah. um, I do a lot of speaking on resiliency And also with my colleague, Dr. Henry Emmons, we speak on resiliency and those negative neuro pathways, they now know that you can decrease them, you can shorten them, and actually you can get them to go away. I mean, but it takes, it does take conscious work. And again, starting with awareness, where, where am I? And it's so human being loving and kind to yourself. It's very human to to worry, to ruminate, to fear. Trust me, I do too at times, you know, but I try to catch it and work with it and really grow that good, those positive pathways. Yeah, good. That's fascinating. I wondered if the research had taken us to the mm-hmm. point where we, said we can actually replace them. So that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So you're going to do a couple things with us here to help us practice mm-hmm. some resilience building in our mm-hmm. life. Uh, I think one's a breathing thing, and then we're going to do something called tapping. Now, mm-hmm. you don't need to get your tap dance shoes. This is something different. <laughs> uh, this is sort of new research, I think, isn't it? Tapping a little bit. So, but we'll come to that. Yeah. Let's do the breathing thing first. All right. So what I thought I would do, if you're open and willing, is lead you in a few minutes of a guided meditation. How does that perfect. sound? Yeah, perfect. All right. So we'll begin, those of you willing to join me, and I would invite you to sit comfortably if you're sitting or standing, but just feeling your body being supported. If it's by a chair, by the floor, you might want to close your eyes. You're not distracted, bringing your attention now to your breath, breathing in and breathing out. Become aware of any tension in your body and just breathe into that area for a moment.
allowing your mind and body to relax. If thoughts come into your mind, let them pass and come back to your breath, your in breath, your out breath. You are relaxed. Now visualize a golden light above your head. See it enter the top of your head, flowing down through your head, into your neck, your shoulders, your chest, your abdomen your hips, down through your legs, your knees, and through your feet and out. This golden light is cleansing and healing your body. Any tension, stress you may be holding is being released. And this light is healing and bathing your body as it moves through you. Now I invite you to look at your heart and invite it to soften. Feel your heart softening. Bring to mind someone who's very easy for you to love. It could be a pet, child, parent, friend, whoever this being is Hold this being in your heart. Allow yourself to feel warm and love. You feel warmth and love towards this being. Notice how this feels in your heart and in your body. Breathing in love and breathing out. You feel love expanding throughout your body and out. You are at peace. Rest in this peace and love for the next couple minutes. And now thank yourself for taking this time. Know that you can revisit this place at any time. And when you're ready at your own pace, let your breathing deepen. Let the awareness of your body against the chair, the floor return. Bring yourself back slowly and comfortably. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. So that was about five, six minutes of a wow. meditation. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very good. 
that elicits that relaxation response, lowers your blood pressure, your heart rate, your cortisol level, very healthy healing, if it speaks to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, Perfect. I would just, in, I would invite people to think about what, like what takeaway, what can calm your body and bring that strength, that peace in. Is it a breath exercise like we've done in the last three series? Is it a meditation? Is it, we did a body movement? Is it listening to music, walking in nature, aromatherapy? I mean, there's just doing art, journaling. There's just so many ways. And I would just at, you know, invite you to think, oh, this speaks to me. This calms and soothes my body and practice and add that in regularly into your daily life. Excellent. Very, very good. All right, let's get to tapping. My wife can hardly wait. She's so excited about <laughs> tapping. Uh, uh, okay, so I train my tapping. I train with Valerie Liss. She trained with the founder. It's been around about, gosh, 20 years, a little bit longer. I think the 80s. Um, so tapping is a self-help tool to release anxiety, fear, heavy charged emotions in our body. The way I learned tapping is, and today I'm just going to teach you two tapping points, okay. how I learned tapping. And if you want to learn more, give me a call or send me a message. How I learned tapping is we have eight key acupressure meridian points in our body. And tapping means tapping with our hands on these points while you're feeling a charged, heavy emotion. Okay. There's a lot of other models out there that you do what I'm telling, what I just said. But you also use all these words. And what I've learned is less is more. It's about feeling the feeling in your body and tapping. And you will only use words if it really helps get the feeling out. So um, and be happy to explain this further to anyone. OK, so the two points I want to teach you today are for anxiety. They're anxiety points. The first is on your hand right between your two fingers. This is called the gamut point. Yep. So and it's literally you tap you tap right between these two fingers like this for a minute or two. This is a main anxiety point for tapping. And and do you tap it hard, soft? Well, what are you doing? Yeah, there's no rule. Oh, this fast or this slow. Just kind of find what feels right to you. Got it. Okay. But it's this is the key point. So you tap here for. A good, you know, minute or two, just breathe and tap. Uh -huh. And then if you notice, oh, I'm still feeling kind of anxious. The other tapping point is right under your eye. It doesn't matter either eye. Uh -huh. You just tap right under your eye like this is a main anxiety point. And again, tap for a minute or two. Uh -huh. So just these two tapping points are really helpful if you are dealing with anxiety, feeling anxious. Huh. Yeah. How oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the final takeaway, I think we did this in a last session, but a reminder, one of my favorite practices is self-soothing of just, you know, putting your hands over your heart area. You can do over your heart area, what they call in the energy system, your fourth energy center chakra, or your fourth and third, your solar plexus and heart area, whichever feels right. Mm -hmm. And just breathe. Our bodies respond to physical touch and just breathe and let your body soften and relax. And then you could even say, may I be at peace or inviting God, the divine, give me your peace and just breathe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite exercises I do regularly if I, if I feel anxious during the day or at night when I go to bed just to like woof, calm my body so this is called self self-soothing I've been doing it for years but I invite you to try it I think it's really a powerful exercise right now I, I think we said this the first time we were together but sometimes uh, Christian people in particular get a little nervous with some of this stuff because it seems so new agey <clears throat> and for me it's just how amazing God created the body. Mm -hmm. that, that the body yeah. was created to bring its own sense of healing and wholeness. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this ability to, to uh, you know, retrofit the brain and, and uh, you know, to tap out uh, things, to breathe out anxiety. Um, 
all of that stuff is just the, the magnificent way that God has created the body mm-hmm. to respond to these mm-hmm. things. Uh, so we have this built-in manual, so to speak, uh, mm-hmm. to help us deal with, with some of these things and build resilience. Uh, at the same time, however, both of us have been in the business long enough to know that sometimes people need help, right? Mm-hmm. They get stuck. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, people have chemical imbalances or they have trauma in their lives that needs help. Um, and um, that's not necessarily the work that you do, but you are certainly aware of it and can be a resource for that. So if people want to connect with you uh, mm-hmm. at all, and maybe you're a good place to start uh, for them, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, so I have a private practice called Learning to Live, learningtolive.org, O-R-G. You can look me up. There's a lot of information on my website. I do have a private practice. I work with people emotionally, spiritually, who are going through everything from chronic illness, illness, grief, loss, finding meaning, purpose. Um, So I would check out my website. And I also have a YouTube channel with that meditation I just led you in on my YouTube channel. Love to have you check it out. It's uh, Learning to Live, Mind, Body, Spirit Teachings, or just plug in my name, Catherine Duncan. But I have 10 plus guided meditations and love to answer any questions. And But I do when it comes back to resiliency it just we all can choose really building our inner strength it's i think that's part of learning to live like how can i really come into my body build my strength my oneness with god the divine it's in our hands to really increase that and live from that place in our life yeah good well catherine it has been a delight these last three sessions to be with you to have you meet our congregation our congregation meet you and um, this stuff has been really good, especially coming out of pandemic. We're all feeling it. Mm-hmm. And um, we're all uh, feeling a little beat up, anxious. Mm-hmm. And so these have just been some gifts for us uh, to try to reclaim our lives, right? And, and not only to reclaim our lives, but to claim them as we move through mm-hmm. uh, the next trauma point, the next whatever it's going to be, because it'll be there. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. we're better equipped to face it. So thank you very, very much. Uh, give yeah, us the, thank you. Uh, give us the website one more time. Yeah, uh, learningtolive.org, O-R-G, All is right, my website. A lot, lot on there. Yeah. I'm a blog writer yeah. and writing my first book. <laughs> so Catherine Duncan. Catherine, yeah. Catherine with a C. Mm-hmm. Catherine Duncan. All right. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank so you much. so much. You're welcome. Yeah, blessings.